Hi. This week is a bit better than last week and there are a decent amount of group buys that I'm looking at myself. Of course, as always, please spend responsibly and don't empty your bank account just to buy some keycaps and keyboards. Anyways, without further ado...
GMK Hamon is finally back for round 2. It's a set designed by Zambumon, who designed some really iconic sets such as GMK Striker and GMK Serica. The name of the set comes from Spanish ham, also known as Hamon, which is one of the most well-known foods in Spanish cuisine. GMK Hamon will come with three kits, a base kit, a macro expansion kit, and a novelties kit. The macro expansion kit does appear to include support for the Alice layout, and the base kit itself includes a numpad, but overall, the kitting is quite simple. The novelties make sense based on the theme, but I probably won't be picking up this kit. I think that the base kit looks really nice already on its own, and while they do provide some customization with black accents if you prefer that look, I don't feel like it's a must buy in most cases. GMK Hamon will also have two metal artisans from Hibi, a red one with a bacon design, and a white one with a yellow egg yolk center. It's a similar story with these artisans like the novelties, and while they're okay in terms of design, they aren't must buys in my book either. Now, it might sound like I'm being really negative for this set, but I'm actually super hyped and I will definitely join in the group buy. It's a set that's quite simple and kind of looks just like a red GMK striker, but it's a set that's been on my list for some time now. I think that it'd be perfect for my high spec and would really complete the board. I am fully aware that I might have to wait a long time before I receive the keycaps due to GMK wait times, but hopefully the process can be somewhat expedited as it is the second round for this set. If you are looking for some red keycaps, I would definitely highly recommend that you take a look at GMK Hamon. DSA Peachy Keys is another project that I've been following for some time now. It's a set inspired by bioluminescent Petri dishes, which is an inspiration that I would not have thought of in a million years, but I think it turned out quite well. I do like how it offers support for a couple different layouts such as 40s, ortho, and ergo, which is great for fans of those more niche layouts. It also does have an international kit that should hopefully provide a bit of language support for people who need those keys. DSA Petri Keys also does have several other kits such as two spacebar kits, a homing kit, and novelties. I understand the design of the novelties that the designer came up with, but I'm probably not going to pick up one of these kits. Similar to GMK Hamon, I think that the base kit stands very well on its own, so I feel like the extra customization isn't all that necessary for me. There are also supposed to be a series of collabs lined up with various artisan and cable makers, but it hasn't been announced yet, so I guess just keep your eyes peeled. Overall, it's a really nice looking set and one that I'll probably be picking up myself. I don't know who this is necessarily for, but I would definitely recommend checking it out. MW Stone Age is a set inspired by the anime slash manga Dr. Stone. The colors for the set matches up with the main character Senku, with his green onion-like hair and the cream-colored clothes that he wears throughout the anime. If I remember correctly, this set has been in development for some time now, and actually started out as an EPBT set, but then shifted to Milky Way Keys, which isn't a bad decision at all, as I've heard that EPBT has quite the backlog to work through. To be honest, this set does give me GMK Dandy vibes due to the similar colors being used, though I guess the colors are being used in a different combination, and the set does stand out with its theme. The novelty designs aren't too bad, and you can see the designs are inspired by the anime, but I am kind of conflicted on whether this would be considered a must-buy. On one hand, I do think that it would help with the customization and making it clear that the set is inspired by Dr. Stone, but on the other hand, I kind of wish that the novelties were more direct for their inspiration, which would make this more compelling to pick up. MW Stone Age does also offer other sets that you can pick up for customization, including light modifiers, Latin alphas, light accents, and spacebar kits, which is quite nice if you have a design in your mind that isn't just the base kit. There's also a 40s kit and an international kit that should provide a bit of language and layout support, which is always nice to see. There will also be two metal artisans from Hibi, an enter key artisan and a 1U escape key. They look pretty nice, and they do somewhat fit with the color scheme as they come in gold, which can kind of replace the yellow accent keys for the escape and enter. One thing that is super exciting is that there will be a collab with QWERTY Keys, the Owl Lab subsidiary, for a special edition QK65. It's a really nice looking board that pairs quite well with the keycaps, as well as several other green sets on the market. There are a few design elements that reference the set, but it doesn't go over the top to the point where it looks tacky. I'm kind of tempted to pick up the green color QK65 as well, because I want to see how it would look if I swapped the white top with the green top, but I don't know if I want to buy two boards just to achieve the look. There will be a limited number of units available for purchase, and a lot of the details regarding the sale have not been announced yet. So if you want the latest information, I would definitely join the QWERTY Keys Discord, as well as the Designers Discord. 
If you are a fan of the anime, or just want a nice green set, MW Stone Age is definitely a set you should look into. KDS Transmutation is a unique set inspired by alchemy and other fantasy elements. I remember I was really enchanted with this set when I first saw it, and I'm really glad it's finally reached the group by phase. The core kit features symbols and designs for almost every key, and as a result, these keycaps will be dice up, which makes perfect sense since if they went with double shot, the price would be astronomical and they definitely would not be able to offer the core kit for $79.99. If you aren't a fan of how that looks though, or don't have the ability to type without looking at your fingers, KDS Transmutation does have Latin alphas and Latin modifiers. It definitely looks a lot more boring and really takes away from what makes this set unique, so if you still haven't learned how to touch type or at least type without looking, this is a good chance to force yourself to learn as you wait for the set to arrive. Other than those kits, KDS Transmutation also has an add-on kit, novelties, and a numpad kit. The add-on kit does provide a bit of layout support as well as a numpad kit if you're someone who uses a full-size keyboard. The novelties kit also does look quite nice, though it's probably not super necessary if you pick up the core kit as some of the designs are already there. It's probably mainly for people who picked up the Latin alphas and modifiers but would like to spice up their setup. Now I'm sure that most people, including me, have never heard of KDS, and this makes perfect sense since it appears that it is Kono's new effort in keycap manufacturing. This is where the group buy has some risk, since we can't verify the quality of Kono keycaps and whether you'll receive a quality product for your money. The prototypes for the keycaps do look promising, but it's yet to be seen whether the quality can be kept when producing at a mass scale. The keycaps are cheaper than standard GB prices as a result, so it's up to you to decide whether the risks are worth it for you. I'm not super sure right now as to whether I'll pick up a set due to these unknowns, but I do wish the best for the designer, and I really hope that Kono can deliver on these keycaps. Speaking of unique, here's Cherry Raw, a new set designed by Bip. It was released on April Fools, so I was originally waiting to see if this was a joke, but it does appear to be very real. If you want something truly unique and has that chaotic energy, this is the set for you. Have you ever wanted to channel the energy of when you or someone poops in the pool on your keyboard? If you answered yes, this is the set for you. The Space 65 is back for another round, this time with some pretty major changes. It's a really nice looking board that was pretty popular, which is probably why it's returning for a third round. You can find all the changes and information in the Geekhack IC and the Gray Studio Discord, but the two biggest changes for me are the mounting style and the inclusion of a daughter board. The original Space 65 as well as the R2 Cyber Voyager were top mount, which was a popular mounting style back then but has really faded with the introduction of gasket mount. It's not a bad mounting style by any means, but it is usually stiffer, which is just not the trend right now. I have used both styles, and while I don't mind top mount myself, I do prefer the feel that gasket mount provides. The inclusion of a daughter board was probably a change that was implemented due to the change in mounting style, but it's also a welcome change because it should provide ESC protection to the Space 65. I remember seeing reports of PCBs and LEDs being shorted in the Round 1 and Round 2 versions of the Space 65, so this change should hopefully reduce that from occurring. These changes, as well as increased material cost, does mean that the price for the Space 65 R3 will be more than previous rounds. The Space 65 R2 retailed for $299 with a $40 shipping fee, which is pretty affordable for the keyboard hobby, while the Space 65 R3 is estimated to start at $375. It's not the most expensive keyboard out there, but the price increase is definitely not insignificant. I think that the changes as well as the situation worldwide warrants the price increase and still makes it a compelling keyboard to buy, but I'm sure that many people would have loved it if they offered it at the same price as the R2 version. The group buy is stated as unlimited, but it does have a theoretical limit as they are accepting orders up to their production capacity. The number of units should still be quite high though, so there's no need to rush. The Zoom 65 Essential Edition was created after people requested a barebones version of the Zoom 65 with Bluetooth functionality and more color options. Wootra Studios has listened to the people, and as a result, this keyboard will be available soon on Mellatrix as well as other regional vendors. There are two types of this board that will be for sale, a standard version with an aluminum weight and knob, and a more premium version with a PVD mirror stainless steel weight 
and a brass knob. The standard version will retail for $159, and the more premium version will cost $179, though these are the prices for Mellotrix, and the prices may vary depending on a regional vendor. There is technically a third version of the board that will be on sale, which is a complete bare bones kit that retails for $99, but that only includes a case and doesn't include any case foam, gaskets, or the storage case. Now it is true that the Zoom 65 Essential Edition is technically more expensive compared to the Zoom 65 that was being offered before, as the package does not include keycaps or switches, but I can definitely understand why some people might not want to include a keycaps or switches, because you might have some keycaps and switches that you want to put on the keyboard already. The price for the Essential Edition is a little cheaper numbers wise compared to the full package, and if you want a more premium version, you can get one for $20 more, which is the same price as the regular Zoom 65. I personally think that if you're going to pick up this keyboard, you should definitely go for the more premium version since the upgrade is not that much more. The only scenario where I wouldn't recommend the upgraded version is if you have a look in mind and would prefer the colors of the aluminum weight over the PVD mirror finish of the stainless steel weight. It's great to see vendors listening to the customers and offering keyboards at a more budget price. I won't be picking up a Zoom 65 Essential Edition for myself but I'm looking forward to seeing what else Wuchi Studios comes up with next for their Mellotrix subbrand. The Harbor is a 65% gasket mount keyboard that draws inspiration from Hong Kong. The designers took elements from iconic buildings from the city and also included an engraving of the Victoria Harbor on the stainless steel weight. The designers for the Harbor also drew inspiration from the 7V, which you can definitely see from the weight and how you can see it on the side profile. There is some flair to the design with the side profile on the weight, but overall, the keyboard is quite simple. I was originally considering this keyboard when I missed the initial sale of the 7V, but after picking up a 7V through the extra sale, I'm probably not going to join in on the group buy. I like how it looks, but it is somewhat redundant with what I already have, and the board is kind of expensive. The Lilac SE Edition sale has already ended, so I won't go more into that, but if you wish to pick up a standard version, will cost you $520 USD, and this is the price before shipping. It's true that prices have changed a lot since the pandemic, but considering the fact that the 7V costs $450 and the R2 is in the works, it might be a little bit of a tough sell. This isn't to say that I'm trying to put down or diss the creators though, because they have truly made a wonderful board. I just think that $520 before shipping is pretty high, which might lead to other people looking elsewhere or potentially waiting for the 7V R2.